see in mechanism of action uh, the main thing you have to note is the normal physiology <clears throat> normal physiology is what acetylcholine this acetylcholine what it will do it will bind to this this nicotinic receptor it will bind you understood right it will it will bind to the nicotinic receptor and it will depolarize the membrane muscle will contract and acetylcholine will unbind it will unbind okay it will bind and unbind that is the mechanism of action of acetylcholine it will bind and unbind so the muscle goes back to the state where it can can be depolarized again so there can be a muscle contraction again but the way succinylcholine works Succinylcholine is a synthetic compound by the way. The, the way succinylcholine works, it's a drug, right? It's a drug to relax the muscle. The way succinylcholine works, it will bind to this receptor and it will remain bound. Please note this point. It remains bound to the receptor. So what happens as it remains bound to the receptor, only initially there will be depolarization. Okay? And there can be muscle contractions. However, as it remains bound, the muscle, the membrane cannot get, it will be, the membrane itself will be desensitized. This is kind of a membrane which wants somebody to bind and unbind every time. And somebody should come and bind every time for it to depolarize. So when succinylcholine is sitting there, there is no chance of somebody coming and exciting it again. You understood, right? This is the main thing you have to focus on. And succinylcholine, uh, whenever you are explaining the mechanism, there are two phases, phase 1 and phase 2. Phase 1 is where there is depolarization, right? And there is muscle contraction. <clears throat> and phase 2 is where there is flaccid paralysis because it continues to be bound. As it continues to be bound, what happens? There is desensitization of the membrane. Desensitization of the membrane because of which there will be flaccid paralysis. Fine. See, in mechanism of action, I would suggest that first you look at this uh, physiology of uh, skeletal muscle contraction. Okay. This is the diagram. Same thing, uh, acetylcholine comes here, binds the NM uh, at a receptor, nicotinic receptor. Then it will depolarize this and there will be an in plate potential. The muscle will contract. The muscle uh, NMJ, neuromuscular junction, will get repolarized and it will be ready for the next acetylcholine. This so acetylcholine will bind and it will get released and it will be destroyed by acetylcholine esters. Okay, This is the normal physiology. Acetylcholine comes, binds, depolarizes it and plate potential will be there and then there is a, um, a acetylcholine is uh, released, acetylcholine is destroyed, muscle membrane gets repolarized, ready for the next potential. Right? After it de uh, depolarizes and there is end plate potential, that is when your muscle contracts. So, same thing explained here. Nerve impulse, acetylcholine released, binds to the nicotinic receptors. It, then there is depolarization and development of end plate potential at the motor end plate. Muscle, uh, there will be influx of put, uh, sodium. Now, there is a muscle action potential. So, this is an action potential and there is contraction of the skeletal muscle then what will happen? Acetylcholine is inactivated by choline esterase, leading to the repolarization of the neuromuscular junction. Muscle is ready for nerve impulse. This is the normal physiology. Now that you have <coughs> explained the normal muscle physiology, let us look at how succinylcholine works. Now, succinylcholine, what it does, it will bind to the same site as acetylcholine. But the thing with succinylcholine is it will not detach like acetylcholine. Okay? So, there are two phases of um, block the phase one block is there there is persistent depolarization it has attached and it is there is persistent depolarization so what will happen there will be muscle twitch and fasciculations that you can see that will be followed by paralysis okay classic paralysis okay because of prolonged depolarization, okay, there will be a lot of muscle twitches, fine. Now, what you need to know is phase 2. Now, phase 2 block, what happens, this is slow in onset, we are saying. The muscle uh, membrane is nearly repolarized. However, nobody can bind. Why? 
because succinyl and choline is still sitting there. So the muscle will have flaccid paralysis here also. Okay, here this is flaccid paralysis, similar to competitive or non depolarizing block. Okay, so here what happens? The word you have to remember is the muscle membrane is repolarized. So here there is continued relaxation of the muscle. Okay, so let me uh, summarize for you phase one and phase two. In phase one, what happens? There is persistent depolarization. Okay, and there is muscle twitch and fasciculation. So there are repeated action potentials, right? Now what happens? This uh, uh, succinyl choline continues to be bound. Uh, when it is continued to be bound, it has actually deactivated the, desensitized the membrane. Desensitized the membrane, just like uh, the non-depolarizing blockers. Okay. Even those non depolarizing blockers, they are antagonists. So, they will bind and they will desensitize the membrane. Similarly, it happens here. Okay, and there will be relaxation of the muscle. Finally, what? The succinyl choline has to be destroyed, right? And then the membrane can become normal. Just revising what we have seen in this video, we are looking at succinyl choline, which is a depolarizing. Uh, skeletal muscle relaxant that works peripherally on the neuromuscular junction okay it's also called as saxamethonium now coming to coming to the chemistry of uh, succinyl choline remember what is the other example of depolarizing uh, neuromuscular blocker it is decamethonium okay so, uh, succinyl choline basically it has slender structure you can see it is a quaternary ammonium compound it is slender and flexible and it looks like uh, it is similar to two acetyl cholines joined together. Fine. This is the chemistry of the succinyl choline. Now let us move on to the mechanism of action. Now mechanism of action, first of all the normal physiology of muscle contraction you should explain. After that what you will do, you will explain how acetyl choline works, right? That is the normal physiology. Then you will explain how succinyl choline works. Succinyl choline basically has two phases of block, phase 1 block and phase 2 block. The main thing about succinyl choline, it is bound, okay. So it is bound and for a long time. So it will have prolonged depolarization. This is the word you have to write, prolonged depolarization. So what will happen, there will be repeated action potentials and there will be muscle twitch or fasciculation. Now considering that it is still bound to the receptors, the membrane becomes desensitized. This is the word you have to write here, desensitized. And it is almost, you can see, it is repolarized. So what happens, there can be no further action potentials and hence there will be flaccid paralysis which is similar to competitive or non-depolarizing block, okay, the, which is similar to the non-depolarizing block. Then the choline esterases will come, remove the succinyl choline and then the muscle can return to normal. That is why we say succinyl choline is fast acting and short acting, okay.